while loop allows you to repeat a block of code over and over again until some condition is no longer true. It's the first looping control statement we'll look at, and we'll learn a few others as well. The syntax for a while loop looks a lot like an if-then statement, but rather than if, we use the keyword while, followed by some parentheses, and inside of those parentheses, we need a Boolean expression that's a test, a condition that if this condition is true, then we will enter what's called the repeat block. And statements inside the braces will run when that condition is true. If that condition is false, just like an if-then statement, we'll jump over the repeat block and continue on in our code. What differentiates a while loop from an if-then statement is that when we reach the closing curly brace of a while loop, we are not going to continue on in our code like you would if you were working in an if-then statement. Instead, what's going to happen is we're going to go back up and test this condition one more time. So as soon as this closing curly brace is reached, we go back up to the test expression and ask, is this true? If so, we enter the repeat block again. When we reach this closing curly brace, we go back up to the top. We ask once again, is the statement still true? If it is, we go into the repeat block and we continue and we continue until ultimately at some point, this Boolean expression becomes false and we continue on past the repeat block in our code. Just like an if then statement, a while loop statement can be written anywhere you can write any other statement. You can also nest while loops, and we'll take a look at that in a future video. So let's visualize this flow of control. Once again, just like with an if-then statement, our code reaches a test, and this is a Boolean expression that's going to evaluate to either true or false, and we're going to reach a fork in the road. So let's imagine that this test is true. What's going to happen is we enter the repeat block, and we move through the code inside of the repeat block step by step, like we would any other code. And at the end of the repeat block, what happens is we go back up to the top, and we test again. If that test is still true, we go back into the repeat block, we do what's inside of the repeat block, and we go back and we test again, and again, and again, until ultimately at some point this test becomes false, and we jump past the repeat block and continue on in code. And so hopefully you can kind of see the loop, the name loop comes from this idea that we're continuously running through some code over and over again until finally at some point we're done and we continue on further. Let's try writing a while loop in code. To set up an example, follow the instructions on the left using the code on the right. This program should have no errors in it, so if you see any red underlines, be sure that you pause and you take a look at what might be going wrong and, and you correct those errors before continuing on in the video. So go ahead and pause the video, set up this program, and we'll talk through what's going on in just a minute. All right, so you should have some code that looks like this. So we have an opportunity to enter some value here. Let's try the value three. And so when I enter the value three, what's going to happen is this prompt number will evaluate to a value of three. And we have an n variable being declared. So I'm gonna set up some space in my memory. So we've got an n variable and n will be assigned an initial value of three. Then what's going to happen is we declare an i variable and i is declared to be a number variable whose initial value is zero. When we reach this while loop, we see we test is i less than n. So i is zero, is zero less than three, that is true. So we expect that print the loop i is, we concatenate i, i is currently zero, we expect i is zero to be printed out. And then we reach this increment statement where we're saying take the current value of i, that's zero, add one to it, that's one, and store it back in i. So i is no longer going to be zero, it's going to be one. And here's where the interesting thing happens. We pause right here in our program, we go back up to the top and we test again. But now notice our condition is slightly different. We're asking is i, which is one, less than n, which is three. One less than three, that is true. So we go into the loop and we're gonna print i is one this time around. And we're going to increment i to be i plus one and it will now be two. So I'm gonna try proceeding with the program real quick and we'll pick up with the evaluation of how the processor is working through each of these lines in just a second. So I press OK, and notice we see loop is loop i is zero is printed out first, i is one is printed out second, and where we left off in our program as we were tracing through the state of it was right here. So we reach the end of this while loop, we go back up, and we're testing now i, which is two, less than n, which is three. Two less than three is true. So we print loop i is and i is two. So we expect to see i is two printed out. And sure enough, that's what we're seeing right here. And then we increment i one more time. So i is changed to now three. That happened on this step. 
we reach the end of our loop, and this time around, we go back up and we evaluate, is three less than three? This is false, right? Three is not less than three. So we do not go into the repeat block. We continue on in our code, and we will print done. I is in whatever I's current value is, I is three. And that's what caused this line to print out. Let's try this again, but let's try entering, say, a thousand times. And we're not gonna trace through this, but notice how quickly your computer was happy to loop 1,000 times. How do we write a loop that runs a specific number of times? Well, we've got a few key ingredients here. First, you declare a counter variable. In this case, we're naming the variable i. This is a convention that's often used in programming. i is an incrementing variable. It's initialized to zero. Then we're going to say the number of times we want to loop, we will loop while i is less than that because we're starting from zero. Then we're gonna do something useful inside of the repeat block, and the last step of our repeat block is to increment our i variable by one. Using this pattern, we can write code that will repeat n number of times, where n is what we write inside of this step here. Right? So if we wanted this code to run 10 times, we would put i is less than 10 here. There are a few things worth noting when thinking about a while statement. First, when the test is encountered, if it's initially false, there's no guarantee that you're going to enter the repeat block. So your while loop may not run at all. Second, if the test never evaluates default, so if that test always evaluates to true, then the loop is called an infinite loop because you keep repeating and repeating and you never make progress beyond the repeat block. And when you run into this condition, you're gonna see that one of the only ways to stop an infinite loop when we're writing code that runs in a web browser is to quit your web browser and restart it. So how can you avoid writing an infinite loop? Well. Ultimately, the test condition of our while loop must become false. So i is less than n. If that's true, we're gonna go into the repeat block. So when this is false, we're gonna stop looping. And so what would make this condition false? The opposite of this statement would make it false. So what is the opposite of i is less than n? That is i is greater than or equal to n. So at some point, something must change such that i becomes greater than or equal to n for this loop to stop running. But notice in this case, it's bad because nothing is changing inside of the repeat block to cause that to happen. But it's not only that something, that one of these terms must be changing from inside of the repeat block, we must be making forward progress towards that expression becoming false. We don't wanna be moving away from that expression becoming false. So another example here that would lead to an infinite loop is if we were accidentally subtracting one from i each time we looped. So, at the end of this repeat block, we're saying i is now going to be i minus 1. So if i was 0, the second loop iteration, i would be negative 1, negative 2, negative 3, negative 4. In this case, we would not be getting any closer towards this statement becoming false because we're not moving closer to i being greater than or equal to n. So if you want to avoid writing an infinite loop, you must be careful to ensure that something inside of the loop is changing one of the terms in your test expression and not only that, but the way that that term is changing is bringing you closer towards that expression evaluating to false.